honor to uh, open up a show that is uh, celebrating the indelible impact that so many people have had on the Harvard Extension community. And I'm here to introduce someone who actually needs no introduction, but he let me come up here in front of the microphone, so bear with me for a couple minutes. Um, Cody, congratulations, first of all, on graduating. But before, oh, yeah. <laughs> Before Cody leaves us for the other Cambridge, I wanted to take a moment to talk about someone who has not just influenced, but been a, a catalyst of transformation for, for HESA. I've only known Cody since January when I joined the HESA board, but since then I have seen him in action, spearheading multiple Zoom and hybrid events. Um, coordinating with me to get the HESA newsletter out on time and to as many students as possible, curating our social media, posting everything. Uh, he's also had an impact beyond HESA. Um, most importantly, his work with the Harvard Square Homeless Shelter and his program for the I Deserve ID, helping the unhoused uh, get identification, showing the power of empathy combined with action. In his HESA presidency, he has overseen the ratification of the HESA constitution and bylaws. He has pushed so hard to get HESA recognized as the official student government of the Extension School and to get the same treatment for Harvard Extension students that all other students at Harvard have. For example, the Grad Plus Meal Plan that Ooh. is, <laughs> is there for the party. Yes, definitely always gets applause, so. <laughs> uh, also, of course, I can't forget these awards, which are Cody's brainchild, and so we wouldn't be here tonight if not for him. And of course, something that is very near and dear to all of our hearts, the Extension Studies Removal Initiative. Um, and I recently learned that Cody has a very humorous but sharply uh, critical video about the um, studying extensions with a hairdresser. So that's really well done if you haven't seen it yet. His advocacy has been recognized at Harvard. He's been mentioned in the Crimson, I think more than any other Harvard Extension student ever, good or bad. So um, all good, of course. Uh, but there are also a thousand million small things that Cody does every day, dedicating and donating his time and his energy and his caring for no recognition or reward other than knowing that he's leaving the extension school a little bit better than he found it. So that brings me to my real purpose for being up here, which is not singing Cody's praises all night, although I'm sure I could. Um, and it's also not to actually introduce him, like, which was a pretext uh, for me being here. Uh, instead, I'm extremely privileged to announce that we are going to cement Cody's legacy and etch him into the annals of HESA history um, by forming a new award category, the Cody Christensen Vanguard Leadership Award. <laughs> And I wrote this card down so I didn't forget, so forgive me for looking at my paper. Nobody tell Professor Slot. Uh, the award will recognize those who embody the extraordinary dedication, the inspiring leadership, and the tireless advocacy that have characterized Cody's entire tenure as president of HESA. It will be for those students who serve as a beacon for their peers, who forge new paths in the spirit of service to the Harvard Extension School student body. This is not just a recognition of Cody's efforts, it is a monument to his relentless effort to improve the experience at the Extension School for every single student. He has provided a benchmark for future leaders to aspire to. Uh, he didn't just set the bar, he is the bar. So, what could be more appropriate than having the inaugural recipient of this award be the person who embodies its very essence? Um, so <laughs> please join me in celebrating our first recipient. And Cody, thank you for your friendship, 
for your unyielding dedication, for your relentless service, and for your enduring inspiration um, to me and to everyone in, in the Extension School. So thank you. Welcome to the 2023 HESA Award, HESA Spirit Awards. This is our second annual HESA Awards. Our first uh, was, yes, I did create it, was created last year. Um, I actually started this an award show at NYU in 2018 when I was there because I knew the importance of recognizing our mentors, our professors, our fellow students, and everybody in our lives, our academic lives that, that really do help us be us, the better, the best us. So um, I'm so happy to say that the NYU Torch Awards are going strong, it's five years now, and this is our second year, our first hybrid. And um, I'm also happy to say that Lehman Hall has said that they will save this night, every night, for the foreseeable future for the HESA Awards. I mean, it's not free. But we can have this space. We can have this space every graduation. <laughs> so, all right. I uh, I'm going to get us started with our first two awards. Uh, the the award category is best mentor. Uh, I'm going to happily give out these awards because the two people who were voted by the students to get these awards. Uh, like, all the votes were for these two people. I mean, maybe there was one or two votes for somebody else, but it was these two people. Uh, the first recipient of the HESA Best Mentor Award has been a wonderful mentor to me. A beautiful piano player, a great friend who I got coffee with every Wednesday or class, and uh, somebody who made me like now. <laughs> like, like. Not love, like. So please, Graham Bird, best mentor. You want to say a couple words, please? Yeah, yeah. Keep, it, keep it short. We're on a text message. Um, <laughs> thank you, Cody. Thank you all. And, um, Congratulations, graduates and family members of graduates and friends. And um, if you're half as happy to be here as I am, that means I'm twice as happy to be here as you are. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, um, I've had some wonderful mentors myself. I think of Professor Greg Nage, some of you know, uh, Deborah Hughes Hallett and Mary Higgins, who used to be uh, Dean at the Extension School. And I draw upon the friendship and encouragement of those people over the years. And I try to, I try to break things. I, I try to share that with, I try to pass it on. So I'm so grateful for the, for the uh, kindness that's been given me. I feel it's my joy and duty to pass it on to my students. And so thank you very much for this recognition and I appreciate it.
The next uh, winner of Best Mentor, our first ever two-time winner of this award. It's our, only our second award show, but <laughs> maybe next year it'll be her third. Um, I, man, it's been a long day. Um, I never had her as a professor, but she did a really beautiful Hesse Professor Spotlight with us. And um, I have heard so many good things about her, but when I got to know her, she told me that I could come talk to her anytime about anything. And she has been open, that door has been open for me. And I'm so grateful for you, um, Cynthia Myersberg. Do wow. time, best <laughs> mentor. Um, I, I thought I was just here to present an award. I didn't realize I'd be getting surprise. <laughs> surprise. Um, I really love what I do. I I really love what I do. I think about what my why is, and my why is helping people get doors open that otherwise aren't open for them. And I've got an amazing opportunity to do that by being a lecturer here. I help people get into, into doctoral programs. I help people learn things that they didn't have access to learning otherwise. And, and I help people make community. And I get the privilege of helping a lot of students who are first-generation college students or have met, you know, have, have had real challenges. And it means a lot to me to be recognized for this because I really put my whole heart in it. And so um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very, very much. And uh, I'm going to treasure this. Thank you so much. As our first two-time HESA award winner, I've asked her to present the next award. She knows a thing or two about <laughs> professors because she has one. Um, so she's going to announce our two award winners for best professors. So um, best professor is a, is a huge honor and uh, it is really my joy to be asked to uh, recognize two truly extraordinary professors who put their hearts and souls into what they do and whose students uh, recognize them for this. Uh, for their commitment to their students, for their creativity in the classroom, for their just tremendous dedication. So it is my pleasure to uh, announce that Zach Novak and Teo Nikolai are this year's uh, winners for the best professor. Of Dr. Nolak and Professor Nikolai cannot be here uh, with us today. Professor Nikolai is literally traveling the world right now doing talks he talked at the alumni uh thing we had this sunday brilliant and dr zach Nowak, i had him for my j term environmental sustainability made me like environment and sustainability like <laughs> <laughs> I, I put stuff in recycling now so thank you thank you dr Nowak. hopefully you're watching the recording um, all right, so I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit because, uh, you know, this person came into my life in January and the way that, that she spoke about me earlier, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've made a friend as fast and as strong as you, Danielle, and I know that, um, this has the board, my has the board is in good hands with you. So I am very, very happy to present, voted on by the student body, undergraduate rising star student leader of the year. Bravo. Um, yeah. Uh... Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who um, who voted for me. Sorry, Cody made me cry a little bit. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, this has been such an incredible um, experience working with Hessa. I joined the board um, after I made the decision in November to quit my full-time job where I was um, 
a uh, vice president of operations for an IT company and I was doing w well, but I wanted to do more. And so I quit my job and leaped into the unknown. And <laughs> I um, I found Hassa in January and found a family, um, a place to fill my time um, productively and to really be able to make an impact um, hopefully on, on the experience for all extension school students. So um, I'm just really honored and thank you so much. Here's this one. Okay. Y'all are so beautifully tall. I have to stand on my tiptoes. <laughs> so um, we've heard so many beautiful things about Cody today already. Um, and I love to pile on to that. Um, I graduated already officially today, but Cody has been good Cody. Um, but what I think is so admirable about Cody is in his beautiful journey and his journey with sobriety, which I think for that, we need to give a hand as well. And he had a wonderful event with Flavor Flav. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit more about Flavor Flav and Cody Christensen's sobriety talk. This was the most nerve wracking event I think that we did so far this year, especially because Flavor Flav told me that I talked too fast, which my husband found very validating, but it was very nerve wracking. Um, but it was an absolute incredible honor to watch Cody and Mr. Flav uh, talk about um, talk about their sobriety journey and and the road that they took, and I think that that really resonated with so many people, uh, myself included. And so it is absolutely no surprise um, that our best Harvard Extension event as voted by the students was the Flavor Flav and Cody Christensen's variety talk. Um, honestly, this is not just the Cody Christensen Awards, I promise. We kept the awards at two. Uh, this is really a HESA event, so this goes to all of the HESA members who helped put this on. Um, Flavor Flav is amazing. He is really down to earth. Um, hearing about his sober journey, talking with him about it, it was really eye-opening. Um, also, because there were so many connections between our sober journeys. Um, how easy it is to go back and how hard it is to stay on the path. So I'm really proud of him. So this award actually goes to Flavor Flav and uh, he will be getting this trophy. Rihanna, we're going to give it to his, his, his manager and she's going to give it to him. So, but we're Flavor proud Flavor. of you too. Thank you. So I'm going to announce these next two awards together. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about the historic launch of the four societies this year. Yeah. Society! <laughs> a huge amount of thanks goes to Cody and to Lindsay, who is joining us virtually. Hi, Lindsay. Um, the the two of them did an unbelievable amount of work advocating for um, the creation of these groups and uh, their work definitely paid off because all of the societies that were formed this year are absolutely amazing and have done some really incredible things and I can't wait to see what they do full semester's worth of time next year. Um, so there are two awards that we we have that I'd like to highlight. Um, and one was the most active Harvard Extension School club or society. And the other was the Harvard Extension School club or society leader of the year. And the reason I'm announcing these is because these two really go hand in hand. Um, this person absolutely went above and beyond anything that we could have ever asked or expected of any student to push forward and advocate for and be there to help 
with not just for society, but HESA events and everything. Um, so as voted on by the, the student body, um, I would like to honor the Harvard Extension School Psychological Student Society and our HES Club or Society Student Leader of the Year, which is Kimia Kriegel. <laughs> Wow, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Wow, you guys, thank you. I, okay, I don't know what to say. I was videoing it because I was like, I'm so excited for who's going to win this. But uh, uh, you guys are amazing. I cannot thank you enough, Cody. You know how much you mean to me. You and Lindsay and Danielle just have been amazing. The whole team, I'm just so proud of you guys for making this possible for us. And, um, you know, just look at look at this room. Like I cannot. This is the. It's better for me than graduation. This is a, this is a family. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I love our team. I love all the societies. I love working with you guys for creative writing and literature. And thank you so much. So. I told Cody before the award ceremony that I had no desire to be in front of the podium for anything except his so what did I do? <laughs> at the very beginning. So I just like to point that out. But <laughs> um, lead by example. <laughs> despite that, I am extremely honored to present this next award, um, which is for most inspiring classmate. And this is somebody that I actually had a class with. Um, and this person was nominated by his peers for his strength, for his resilience. Um, he represented our country as a competitive rower, which I just found out. And he has absolutely been a positive force both, both in and out of the classroom. I was very lucky to have a uh, an on-campus weekend with him. So uh, please join me in celebrating Andrew Johnson. Am, uh, am I audible to anyone who's actually in the room? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you so much. I'm uh, beyond uh, thrilled to be accepting this award. I wish I could do it in person with all of you. Uh, and I'm, I'm not far from here and uh, listening in the background on Zoom. I could even tell, like even blinded on Zoom, I could hear some familiar voices and uh, know that some of my uh, absolute favorite uh, professors and fellow students are in the room right now. Um, I'm very flattered that uh, inspiration is the uh, the thrust of this award. I think that inspiration is a lot of times um, where you find it and being open to those um, kinds of experiences. I, I love um, doing things, but for me, inspiration is often like an afterthought. And so it's always, um, a nice validation of my efforts to hear what people think of uh, of them in the past. Sorry for knocking over seltzer cans. Uh, and sitting here, I've also been thinking about what a fantastic and intentional community uh, Harvard Extension School is and allows us to create with each other. Uh, who would have thought that some of the closest and best friendships that we could make are over Zoom talking about uh, psychology or math or or what have you. Uh, maybe all the professors in the room are nodding their heads because they've been in that uh, for so long. But for me, and I think for many others, it was such a uh, refreshing surprise to find uh, not only education, but community and togetherness. Um, because if it's not for each other, what do we do this all for? So thank you very much for consideration. And I'm very proud to be part of this community with all of you. Hi, everybody. I just waited to put the, the spotlight there on Cody. That is an extreme close up. Um, can we, yeah, everybody, yeah, now you can hear, now you can read the captions on the bottom. Okay, great. All right. Okay. 
Uh, so this next category is super dear to my heart because Cody um, was a big advocate getting community service back into the whole Hatsa family and HES. And uh, last year we were able to do so many amazing things under this whole umbrella. And um, it just joys me so much that we can keep this tradition going. And so the person who gets this award is somebody that I have found to be one of the sweetest, most supportive, um, the type of person that if you need help, she will be the first to yell right here, I'm going to support you. So I'm very happy that I get to say that this award goes to Jacqueline Shelton for Community Service Ambassador. She is not here with us, I think, today, and she's not on Zoom. So hopefully she will hear this recording and she will hear the round of applause for how amazing. Yeah, I do have to, to send a lot of praise to Jax Shelton. She was a member of HESA back in the day. And always fought for, for student rights. So, um, but a very deserving award for, for Jack and Jill. All right, next up, I don't think she's here yet, but I will make sure she gets trouble. Is anybody here on the Facebook uh, HES groups? Okay, then you have seen her posts. You have seen her videos. You have seen the way she connects the community. Um, I don't, I don't even know how to describe her. She is a little bubble of energy and love for others. Um, so when she gets here later to, tonight, uh, I will give her Scully Wang, the community, the community connector award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell I'm really excited about this one? <laughs> so last year I made one of my closest friends that I think is just a incredible human being that is also so supportive of HES and was a part of HESA as well, who just is a bundle of joy who spreads joy as soon as she walks in the room. And it was just the most beautiful thing to have my writer's residency with her last, well, yes, last year, um, because she that much better. So for our most active alumni, Laura, <laughs> you want to come here? Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, thank you, first of all. Um, wow. Uh, some of you know, and I'm sure lots of you don't, um, I, I really came by um, HES by mistake. Uh, I had actually started a graduate program at my alma mater, uh, pursuing a different subject matter. And ironically, they had four full-time professors on sabbatical, but they raised um, the population of the English department. And so I was a secondary education major and I needed three additional classes um, to be able to get a secondary education certification in English specifically. And so I Googled, graduate credit, uh, creative writing or English. And HESA was the first thing to pop up in Google. And I thought, Edward, that seems absolutely unobtainable, but I'm gonna click on it anyway and see what it's about. And so I, I came here with the intent of earning nine credit hours and leaving and transferring back to my alma mater. And after my first two classes, I was mesmerized. Um, and I, I've gone around and telling people today that my first two classes weren't even some of my best classes, but 
those are the things that hooked me. And um, this has been such a transformative experience. Um, you know, met Cody right as COVID was starting online, didn't see him in real life for over a year, um, started, you know, making relationships because as some of you might know, um, writers are very collaborative. We're all up in each other's business. Um, so as you were saying, we had a, how would you even describe it? Family. Yeah. We built a family of 14 writers over the month of July last summer, and it was life-changing. I mean, I could have graduated in 22, but I pushed my degree one year longer, so I didn't have to do my residency on Zoom, and it's possibly one of the best decisions of my life. Um, so uh, this, this means a lot. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Well, Danielle and I decided to do this award together. I think this person deserves a, a double presentation. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This person has done um, so much work. Also came into Hessa uh, sort of late in the game. Uh, on that note, everybody who came in late in the game has, has been my rocks. This person has been one of my rocks without this person, the uh, award for interactive engagement award. Um, we wouldn't have the four societies that we had. You wanna talk a little bit more about this person? I sure do. Before we say her name. <laughs> um, so I really wanted to be a part of this one because this is somebody who joined the board at the same time that, that I did just about. And we have really collaborated and worked together so much. At first, I remember telling Erin, wow, this girl is intense. Like, she is super organized, and she is on top of stuff. And um, and like, borderline too intense sometimes, <laughs> but, but in the best possible way. Um, but I quickly found in her a friend and somebody who is there for whatever you need at any time that you need it. Um, she instantly replies. She is extremely active in engaging, not just with the societies that she helped create, but also with any student who ever asks a question in any WhatsApp chat. Um, she also was responsible for building a community in WhatsApp so that it's easier for people to find regional and, and interest groups. Um, so extremely happy to present this to Lindsay Siegfried de Sanchez. You guys, I'm gonna like cry my eyes out here. <laughs> um, well, that way, look, one second, wait. One second, one second. Sorry. You muted? Yeah. Okay, wait. go. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, go, wait, go, which is it? Um, thank you guys. I, um, <laughs> I, Obviously, I can't do this alone. I can't build a community by myself. I just, I'm literally taking your ideas and just making them happen. So thank you guys for all that you've contributed and for being a part of all of this. Um, I've been thinking about it and I, um, <laughs> I was the kid who didn't get invited to stuff. And so I've spent my whole adult life just trying to make sure that the adults um, can all feel included that everybody is always invited. Um, and, and you guys, <laughs> you guys have made it happen. You guys have always shown up. Um, so thank you guys. Uh, direct, director of technology doesn't know where her microphone is. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I think before I think we'll, we'll take a little break here to zoom in to get some food because I need a little something to snack on. Um, it's not this. Uh, an award that we created last year that we we knew had to be a part of this ceremony going forward was the Phoenix 180 Award, and this award. Um, signifies someone's journey from uh, academic, I would almost, they struggle basically. And then they come out on top and they're graduating or they're doing something amazing. Um, and so we often ask for people to tell us their story in this award. And uh, she's not here with us tonight, but Maya Bach uh, is our Phoenix 180 award winner. <laughs> tonight. So Maya Bach, Phoenix 180 award winner. We thank you so much. And later, um, as we start posting the videos and stuff, we'll try to put a little summary of, of who she is and her story. Okay. All right. Let's take a five. <laughs> actually a very dear friend of mine and again I was not surprised when the student body voted for this person um, for most inspiring alumni. I started here in summer of 2020. I moved here in the fall of 2020 and one second can you undo the spotlight just so I can see everyone's mm -hmm. face thank you. I need to see their face when I share this story. Oh, sorry. There you go. So in the fall of 2020, there was another student leader uh, like myself who wanted to see students get together. And during COVID, it was tough because everything was closed around here. Um, but this leader, she said, let's do it. And so in 2020 and 2021, we started having picnics in the yard and we brought students together um, in the time when we needed connection the most. I consider this person such a really great friend, uh, a huge support to me. Every time I would talk about uh, administration drama, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they're watching, they know. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not saying anything we don't all know. Um, she was always my rock. And then when she graduated last year and took her little dog and her husband with her, it was a very sad, sad time for me. But she is going on to do amazing things. And I love her very, very much. Rasha, this is for you, most inspiring alumni. Oh, I didn't get everyone here. Danielle's going to bring you up to the, the podium so you can talk about that. I figured out where the microphone is. So yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hi, yes. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I sort of see myself. Hi. Yeah, you can hear me? Okay, hi. Hi, everyone. Sorry, yes, we're in the car driving back to Missouri from Colorado. Hi, yeah, it's really such a big surprise. Cody would not tell me <laughs> what award I actually got. So that is really, I'm just really humble and really surprised. Um, thank you to everyone who voted for me. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> I had such a good impact. Um, and Cody, yes, uh, without Cody, a lot wouldn't have happened the way it did. So thank you so much to everyone. Um, also, some of you know, uh, my dad passed away three weeks ago, so I'd like to dedicate this in his honor because I know he'd be proud of it. So thank you all so much, really. This, this really means a lot. Thank you.
Thank you, Rasha. Our next award goes to somebody who is here with us tonight. I did not have take this class myself, but when this person did a student spotlight for us, I was very intrigued and learned so, so, so much. So um, I would love to present one of the most intriguing class awards to Professor Alexandra. Please come up and tell us a little bit about your class. I, I didn't actually expect a poll call on my class. <laughs> I was just thrilled to be able to be here in time, traveling directly actually from an airport, coming from a conference, actually international conference on the future of education, but so thrilled to be here with you, whether you're joining us live in person or on Zoom or in recording, which is actually the format of our course on self and identity. And as we study in the course, when you get something, recognize for something that is so central to your identity, it means so much to you. And everyone who's taken the course knows that this award means a lot. And you are responsible for this award because truly you inspire me. And what I love so much is that you inspire each other. And this is really how we learn in our course from each other and with each other so thank you thank you thank you i am deeply touched and i promise i'm gonna keep it short wow. thank you <laughs> Our second um, most inspiring class award goes to a another class that I took that a lot of people took. You could use it as a requirement, so some people take it. Uh, <laughs> philosophy wasn't my thing, so I took this class. It was called Dying Well by Dr. Jason Silverstein, and it is one of the most life-changing classes <laughs> I've taken, a class on dying well. Um, the first thing that we did in this class was write a letter to the people that we would leave behind and what we would want them to do. And look, I'm not a spring chicken, but I don't think I'm at that point in my life where I would think about writing to my people I would leave behind what I would want done with my body and my things and all that. So it was um, genuinely a, a truly touching class and I came away better and more prepared for everything. Another assignment was to ask somebody older in our life what they want done when it's their time to go. And I had an interview with my mentor from LA. And we had never had a conversation like that before. And it really opened up our relationship too. So um, thank you, Dr. Silverstein. Um, everybody take time well if you still have some credits left at AGS. We're going to present another award together. So, Danny is going to talk about our first winner, and I'm going to talk about our second one because we both have a, a connection with with each of them. So, Danny. Yeah. Um, so this next category for best advisor, uh, as we were we were going through the results, I was like, hey, I know this person. Um, and it's because it's my advisor. I promise there's no vote rigging. She has absolutely just been extremely helpful in every single thing that I've needed, every question that I've had. And there have been a lot, um, especially with my myriad of weird transfer credits and uh, she's just been just wonderful. So it wasn't a surprise to see that our, our first recipient is Trisha Lemonin. Um, she wasn't able to be here, but she did send me an email with a statement. So I'm just going to read that for her. 
Uh, she said, hello, Hesse community. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you tonight, but I wanted to express my gratitude for being selected for this Hesse Spirit Award. While my colleagues and I derive a great deal of satisfaction working with students and being part of their academic journey at the Extension School, it is a very special honor to be recognized by the students themselves. Thank you again for this wonderful award, and I wish you all continued success at the Extension School and beyond. So thank you, Trisha, for everything that she does. The second best advisor award. Look, we like giving out awards, all right? <laughs> so we're going to give out two of each. Um, is actually somebody who helped me have my Harvard experience. Um, without Mark Ochita helping me find the special students program, which is a GSAS program uh, com combined with Harvard Extension School, um, I wouldn't have had nearly two, two years in on-campus housing or uh, taking Harvard College classes for credits and uh, being a part of all the amazing things that I wanted to do at Harvard. Mark helped me and so many other students really get a different experience from Harvard. Uh, he's also a great TA. I think Professor Bird can say uh, yes to that. <laughs> um, he was our an E3, math E3 TA. He also helped me like back a little bit, watching his replays. Um, Mark, you, you do a lot and you 100% deserve um, this, this award. That's my turn. Come say it. Well, I was gonna say this morning, I had a chance, this morning seems like three days ago. Yeah, I was up at 4.30 in the morning, so it seems like a long time ago. But I was able to catch a smidgen of the uh, live stream of the um, uh, morning ceremony in which uh, Larry Baca was introducing um, and congratulating the uh, Harvard Extension School 2023 graduates and welcoming them into the, how did he, the fellowship um, of educated individuals. And I, I, I caught it just at that moment. I said, that's fantastic. And it, it really was a reminder of how much I really love what I do as an academic advisor. I mean, it is, um, well, I mean, what can I say? The person-to-person -person connections that we are able to make with our students and um, oh, the diversity of, of the experiences that people are bringing into the program, just amazing, really. And to be able to be, have a small role in being part of their journey as they navigate through um, their experience at Harvard, uh, it, it's truly amazing. I mean, like those aha moments that they share with us and some of their, um, well, their triumphs and the challenges and maybe some perceived failures, but really they're not failures. They're really opportunities to grow. And I think failures, you know, and I put that in quotes, really make us more, um, well, they make us stronger and they make us wiser. And I think more compassionate as people. And, I, and I, it's just wonderful to be a part of that. So, I mean, as an academic advisor, I know how hard you all work and, and the sacrifices you make and, um, uh, you know, the, the perseverance and the tenacity that it takes to get through the program. And, you know, we're, we're, we're true leaders. It's so wonderful to have this one time of the year where we can celebrate uh, commencement and be part of that celebration with you all. So all I can say is that, um, it's an honor and a privilege to be an academic advisor. And um, and, and uh, all of my, and Trisha, by the way, is my colleague and she's, she is wonderful, well-deserving. So I'm glad she's uh, able to share in that as well. So anyway, thank you all very much. Uh, we love what we do. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry on this one, but this one um, also goes out to clearly uh, someone deserving that the student body decided to vote uh, her for this award. This award recognizes someone in our community 
with a little more silver hair than others. It's called the Silver Award for, for students 60 and over. I mean, I don't like to talk about my age, but you know what, if they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it. This amazing woman is not just a friend, uh, not just a colleague, she's a friend, she's a mentor. She um, has been a rock, a support of mine. I am just so proud of everything that she has done, fighting cancers and just graduating today. Uh, I am just, I, I love you, Victoria. And uh, the Silver Award goes to Victoria Chabot. Yeah. Silver. <laughs> yeah, girl. I was a blonde. I was like Reese Witherspoon blonde until COVID hit. And then it had to go away because who's going to go get her hair done? I am fighting for silver to bring it in, not shoot it out. But this school, first of all, congratulations to everyone that graduated today. I, I have a, a, a way I look at the world. I work in the country of Rwanda and there are buffaloes in Rwanda. And if you know the story of the buffalo on the American plains during a storm, when a storm is coming, Cows run from the storm and buffaloes walk towards the storm. I am a buffalo. Now at my age, I'll be 66 next week. I do not want to be called a buffalo. <laughs> but I am willing to be called Imbogo. That is the Kinyarwanda word for buffalo. So I am Mama Imbogo in Rwanda. And I went through a very difficult surgery in February. And one of the reasons when I talked to my surgeon, they cut out part of my jaw, they took out teeth, um, they paralyzed my face. And I said, I have to be at graduation. And they said, oh, no problem. I'm here. I am. I am in Bogo, but let me tell you something. All of you are too. You face your storms, you keep going, and you change the world. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Hessa. I have been a fan of Cody's since the first time I held up a sign that said, I don't study extensions. Wow. <laughs> And while I'm a quieter member of this group, I observe you all, I watch everything I can get to, and I am so impressed with this organization. I will continue to stay engaged, and I have big things to do in the world, and so do you. Thank you all. So this next category is for a group of people. Um, so bear with me as I read a lot of names, but each and every one of these people is so deserving of recognition for the work that they have done this semester in getting the societies uh, up and running and the incredible events that have been held, the Zoom lessons that have been studied, um, all of the work that's been done. And I've been really honored to be collaborating with, with so many of these people. And, um, and I know that Lindsay is as well um, to speak for her here, but uh, we wanna recognize the Club and Society Rising Stars. Um, so Gustavo Gomez, Nicholas Garrity, Magna Mina, Natalie Zender and Kat Dvorak. So congratulations. And we have two of them here with us tonight. Just two, right? Is it? <laughs> 
Oh, I'm going to say something about your, your organization. This is you guys food. have two on Zoom, too. Oh, Nick is there. And so is so, uh, Gustavo. Nick and Gustavo uh, are both here on Zoom. Should we bring it here? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, hello. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, I am so honored to be standing here next like, to Kat. Um, especially because when I first saw the Instagram account for the Creative Writing and Literature Student Society, um, really long after them, I got really excited because I was like, wow, finally, someone who cares about writers. Um, you know, and recently there's been protests too um, for the writers of war. I don't know if you guys have seen that because um, we're just so underappreciated, undervalued, and um, it's just so nice to be a part of a community who actually gives us a voice and a platform and a family to, you know, be able to just cheer each other on and make us what other people might make us feel small, make us feel important, make us feel big because we are, we make an impact. And um, it just takes like 10 years, you know, to write a book, but it's fine. Like eventually we'll get there. <laughs> so um, I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. And thank you to Cody for putting all that hard work and his team and everyone at HESA. And yes, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to second that. I mean, without Cody, Danny, Lindsay, everybody at HESA, you know who you are. You know, without Art and Gustavo pressuring us to become <laughs> officers, <laughs> yes, we we would be here. So um, thank you to everybody who pushed for these societies because for a long time at the Extension School, I felt a little bit aimless. It, it's it's lonely being a virtual student. And I was seeking some sort of community and I found it thankfully because you guys created it right at the right time, right when I needed it. So thank, thank you to everybody who's in this room and, and everybody who's in the Zoom for um, everything that you've done. And we promise we're gonna we're gonna take care of your baby and we're gonna we're gonna try to do great things. So thank you everybody. <laughs> Oh, one second. All right. Cody, you just muted yours. Did you want Nick and Gustavo to take a moment to say something? Yep, we'll start with Nick and then and then Gustavo. Hey everyone. Uh honored to be here. Did not expect expect this award. Um, I'm not much for speeches, but I do want to thank HESA, the clubs and societies, all the students involved at every level for making these awards and all of our student-led events possible. Uh, in my time at Harvard Extension, I've been surrounded by motivated, inspiring, good people. And without them, I wouldn't be accepting this award. I'd love for this spirit of good-natured community support to last at Harvard Extension for many years to come. And I know that with leadership of the caliber here tonight, that reality is more than possible. Thank you for the opportunity to help build this community and thank you for your friendship. Go Crimson, thank you. All right, so I guess I guess I'm up. Um, well, I, I have to start by saying you had the two best representations of the Creative Writing Society on the podium they are already speaking. So there's not much I can add uh, about, uh, you know, uh, me and, and, and Art and uh, the Creative Writing Society. Uh, we, we are there to, and we get inspired by what those two get uh, done uh, on a daily basis. And um, I'd like to say thank you uh, for, for this recognition. Um, uh, at any rate, what, what I feel is that any kind of recognition that we get, uh, tonight belongs to everybody here because we are a community and uh, we inspire each other and uh, and we are all part of this same energy and uh, some of us sit in positions or have time or 
you know, are, are in, in a moment of their lives where, where they can add to that fuel or that fire. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's, that's great, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, this doesn't belong to everybody. And I, and I really, I, I, I really have, all the way from Panama as an international student, really found myself to be in a community uh, of very smart and very uh, motivated people that have uh, inspired me to become better and inspire me uh, uh, every day. And, uh, uh, you know, it wouldn't be possible without the HESA members, the HESA board and all the other societies. So I, I say this is a celebration for everybody. And uh, thank you everybody for being here and let's get cracking. We have another year and we have many more iterations uh, of uh, great things ahead of us. So I imagine there's some people on Zoom right now going, what about me? I see you, I know who you are. But guess what? The Society Rising Stars have some people that they look up to, I think, and those are what we're calling the uh, society luminaries, and those are the presidents of the four societies. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Art Foster, Society Luminary for the Creative Writing and Literature Student Society, Heather Fife from the IOPSS, Michelle Kim, I see you on there, Miss Luminary, and Kimia. Also, illuminated. Okay, and I think that's my cue again. You have to do the audio. Yes, Art and Michelle. Yep, yeah, we'll start with Art and then. Okay, great. Uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, thank you for this. This is amazing. Um, I can't believe we are here. After only two months, I think it's two months to the day that we've actually had these societies um, in order. Uh, we launched and we have done amazing things so far. And I think pretty much everyone in the room, I don't think there's anyone here that hasn't played a part in our success. Um, I know we have a long way to go, but I'm still calling it a success because it is. Uh, as for the creative writing literature, we have 120 on our rolls right now. We have had amazing events. Um, and I owe most of it to Gustavo, to Kat, to Natalie, uh, especially Natalie, she's on the ground doing doing the work there in Cambridge. We appreciate it so much. Um, and thank you to everyone who, who got us this far for the last several years has been fighting the good fight. Uh, Cody, thank you. Um, Callie, I know she, I don't think she's here tonight. Um, uh, Lindsay, everyone that, that's fought for us to get here, thank you. I'm accepting this because of what you guys have done. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Hi everyone. I also thank each and every one of you for inviting me to this space and also sharing this award. As many of you folks already shared, I never expected any of it. And also it's been two months and a day, but it feels like almost a two year. Um, so I want to thank everyone who was who were able to make it possible for all of us. And I think I am more excited, like just like how the awards that illuminate, that more excited for the what the future might bring because we have a lot of great idea. And now we are as an official society, there's so much thing that I'm excited to bring forward. And for next year's, um, I'm excited to share more things that is coming up from our group as well. So thank you. In addition to recognizing the luminaries, the leaders of these societies. Um, we would be remiss if we didn't also acknowledge the luminaries of our student government, um, which is why we are honoring uh, two people. And I'm going to be one, but Cody, I'm gonna need you up here for two reasons. Uh, one is for your leadership, which I, I already spoke about earlier, but I really can't say enough about what a phenomenal leader Cody has been and what a tireless advocate, not to repeat myself, but um, absolutely honored to award you the student govern government luminary. We're gonna to have to get a better, a bigger shelf for all we've done. I'm very excited. Um, I can't wait to see next year when I come back on Zoom to watch HESA, the HESA awards from the other Cambridge and see who gets luminary awards with student government. And I believe 
by then it will be the officially recognized student government. I've, I've heard some things. I've heard some things from the highest uh, assistants. I'm not going to give away any names, but someone said next year with a wink and a, a nod. So I think it's going to happen. So, all right, thank you. Yes, I. Sorry, wait, really quick before you uh, before you move on. I also just wanted to present you with another uh, gift from the Hesse board, and we have to thank Lindsay for putting this together. It is a collection of photos which she lifted from our social media, so God knows what's on there. <laughs> a picture of the board, uh, and she uh, she put it together. We uh, wanted to give you that. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. I, I'm gonna take it to Cambridge and drink out of this. Like, who are those people? That's my family. Ah. Right, so, before we had this full board, before we had these four amazing societies, it was me and Hira. Hira, my amazing vice president. By my side, every second, I mean, it literally was just me and her. I think we had one other officer and they had to put them. It was, it was me and Hira. And she is so talented. I don't know if you heard the Hessa song. Anybody heard the Hessa song? Yeah, it was amazing. Maybe we'll close the night with the Hessa song. Pull the video up, Hira. We might, we might play that at the end, okay? Um, but I just want to thank you. Like, she is so busy. She's created the organizations that help the youth. And she's traveling the world, uh, performing. She's winning awards for songs, and she's, you know, killing it with her grades too. So, I am incredibly honored to give Hira the Student Government Rising Star Award. Oh man, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> it was easier to watch all the speeches earlier. I hope you all can hear me good. Uh, my name is Hira, I'm tuning in from Malaysia. And I think one of the most beautiful things about the Harvard Extension School community is wherever you're tuning in from the world, you feel like you're still next to the person in the same room. And it's been such an honor to work side by side with Cody halfway around the world without even noticing the time differences. Oftentimes I'm up in the midnights or AMs or early mornings to be a part of this community. And it's been such an honor to be vice president on, of HESA on top of my other commitments with Ascendance and my music career. Um, it's been a fantastic ride understanding how Harvard Extension School works, how it's like to build a student government when it's just me and Cody, and then later on with the fantastic full board that we had over the spring semester. Um, I'd like to thank everyone because I think for everyone who's part of HES, the people in my family who support all my crazy late night meetings, I wouldn't be able to do this and wouldn't be able to stand here without you guys. So thank you so much for supporting my mission to change the world, whether it's through music or through Ascendance or with Tessa. I'm really, really honored. So just as a reminder, these were um, voted on by the student body. So uh, I, once again, um, actually, do you want to take this one? No, um, I'm going to repeat myself because this, this person um, was voted for the undergraduate student leader of the year. And I don't think it's any surprise for all of the reasons that I've, I've already enumerated, but um, Cody Christensen was, was elected um, the student government undergraduate, sorry. It's been a long night, undergraduate student leader of the year. So thank you, Cody.
Patty, I think you know that you've been a great friend to all of us. I, uh, it's been an emotional day. I met Cody through Zoom, like Hira as well. And I was so excited when I got to meet you in person because as I think I speak for everyone who knows Cody, he becomes just an instant friend and an instant light. And your mom is super proud of you. All super proud of you. You're a superstar, Cody, and we love you. Yeah, and that one's a plaque. So now I gotta get some nails for the wall too. <laughs> yeah, like crazy for the wall. Um, before we're almost done, I think we have two more awards to give away, and then one final thing that I'd like to say. Before that, we have the president of the Harvard Humanities Society, who would like to just say a little bit about her society, and hopefully get some ATS students involved. Thank you, President Cody. Um, thanks, everyone. So my name is Diana Lusenko. And as Pudi had mentioned, I founded the Harvard Ukrainian Student Society a semester ago, actually, to respond to uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and fundraise um, and we've been spearheading certain cultural um, and fundraising and just community initiatives that support Ukrainians in Ukraine in the time of need. Um, actually, before, um, as far as even a day ago, I didn't know that HASA existed. And that is, I think, the problem that's, you know, culminated in the situation as an extension student, you don't really, it, it's decentralized, and so you don't really know what, um, you know, what, if, there, if there's a community or a service, or if there are people that are available to be with you and to help you, and if you can actually connect with them. And so I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to connect, and if you are interested in, it's actually not a uh, private extension organization, it's a university-wide organization, so you don't need to be an extension student, you can just, you know, a friend, or an alum, or a professor, um, so if anybody has any interest in that, uh, please let me know, and I look forward to connecting with all of you uh, later today, and hopefully participating in HASA's uh, leadership positions as well. Thank you, and so nice to meet you, and thank you, Cody, for organizing this. Um, I think, it, speaking for myself, obviously, I support Ukraine a thousand percent, so I love this, and definitely, please join this organization. I love when a Harvard Extension student does something that's university-wide, and I think I'll, I'll, think I'll call up one more person before, before we get to the next awards. This last year, I joined the Harvard Graduate Council as the HES rep for the Harvard Extension School uh, rep representative as the president. And I became really good friends, closer friends with this gentleman who I had been friends with off and on since 2020. But this year really cemented our friendship. And I think we pushed each other to do some really great things for the entire graduate student body. Um, we did things like making sure that we had email access, alumni email access. Um, the entire Harvard Graduate Council um, signed off on a resolution to support HESA becoming a student government because to the Harvard Graduate Council, HESA has always been the student government of the Harvard Extension School. Um, I am so proud to say that Brett Monson is the first ever Harvard Extension student elected president of the Harvard Graduate Council, representing all graduate schools at Harvard University. Oh. I think we had a really good bank manager. <laughs> no, Brett, come, tell, come say something about HGC and what you intend to do next year. Yeah, thanks, Cody. Uh, so if you don't know, our graduate council is made up of 12 different graduate professional schools. Uh, extended school is a big part of that. And uh, the cool thing about this coming year is that we actually are going to have some committees that are going to be taking place. They'll be meeting on Zoom. And so we do need extension school students to be the reps uh, that would serve and have to be on campus for those positions. But if you also just wanna serve on a committee and be part of like our advocacy panel, be part of like our finance committee, et cetera, those are open to any graduate students and those are gonna be meeting on Zoom, like I said. So if you are wanting to find those platforms, uh, and by the way, HUC is kind of one of the only ways 
that you can meet people from other schools organically through programming that Harvard offers. Like, there's really not that much else out there. And so if you are wanting to just meet people from these other schools, it's a big, big opportunity. And uh, we're really excited. we got a lot of work to do. Um, and I think that this last year, uh, Cody and I, as well as a, uh, a bunch of really great folks from the Extension School, uh, there were our reps, and we really did a lot to continue to push the work forward. Uh, but uh, there's more to be done. And the graduate council's best days are still ahead of us. So if you're living locally, please let me know so we can get you that information about how to become a rep for the extension school. Uh, there's elections for the exec board, but also if you're not living locally and you still want to be part of one of our committees, uh, we'd love to have you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations again. That's Amazing campaign manager. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Who could that possibly Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so we have two more student awards. Is that right? I think we have two more student awards and then one final, um, one final special award that I want to give out. So I'm really proud to give out the graduate rising star. Graduate rising star is a graduate student who um, who is, is coming into their own, starting to become a leader, um, you know, working in societies or a part of that that has a board, uh, or just becoming coming to the general assemblies, raising their voice, helping out their fellow students. And so the graduate rising star, newly active student leader is Lydia Rossman. And I think she's on on the stage. What can I say? Um, wow. Thank you. Uh, I am. Um, it, it's interesting because if you were to look in the chat right now, there was a, a question um, as to whether there was a veterans committee. And I am a veteran. And so I've spent the last almost 20 years of my life in service. And I see my time here at HES as a, an extension of that service. So um, thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to serve the school. Uh, thank you for the opportunity um, to get involved. Thank you for creating community, creating uh, family. And I really hope to spend more time, um, I hope on campus pretty soon, I'm going into my thesis, two semesters of thesis, so maybe I'll get to spend some more time on campus. But um, I look forward to serving some more uh, until 2024 when I graduate. So thank you. Our last student award for the evening is our graduate graduate student of the year i think a lot of you know that you know her especially those on zoom um, she does amazing work for the student body and i am so honored to give this award to melissa deering <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah you got your picture? Yes. There you okay. go. Okay. There are so many pictures today. <laughs> thank you for this. And thank you for doing HESA Awards. I really think it's fun. Um, this is all because of the Harvard Extension International Relations Club, now International Relations Student Club. <laughs> and we have had so much fun building this over the past couple of years. And I just am wishing Lydia and everyone who's going to be taking it over have so much fun with this, build it up. And again, I love that we are making community here. Go get, go get, go through the classes, go get all the professors, make them guest speakers, make them like the clubs, make them like HESA, make them get involved with us, make them know who we are. 
be loud and help help us shine and good luck and I'm gonna miss you guys and stay in touch. <laughs> All right, the last plaque of the night, the last award is the president award. It is the president's choice. And uh, so I get to choose who this goes to. And next year's president, Amina, I think she's she was on for a minute. Um, she will get to get the president's award. Um, many of you who know me, who've seen my journey at HES, know that me and the administration have not always gotten along. We maybe have butt heads a few times here and there. Maybe they didn't like when I held a rally in Harvard Yard and got <laughs> down with extension study. We don't study extensions. I mean, you know, maybe they didn't like it when I started an online petition that had over 200 people hold up signs saying, I don't study extension. And, and they're doing a petition. Uh, they didn't like it when I fought to get a meal plan for all the students because I don't think they got to do it themselves. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oops, got their first. But even with this year, um, them really not being willing to call us a student government right now, Dean Coleman this semester took us under her wing and became the advisor to HESA. And like the other deans at the other Harvard schools started having monthly meetings with HESA and started seeing what HESA could do for the student body. She gave us a $10,000 budget this semester. HESA hasn't had a budget in years. Um, she, she gave us the ability to start these societies because for the last couple of years, no student organization has been able to form because of some other administrators. Um, and she said, we need to make it easier for students to connect. And as you can tell, these student societies are changing student experiences here. So I was very happy to walk across that stage today. And even though Dean Coleman was sitting down during my photo, I had Dean Spreadbury, who I love too. So that was, that was nice. Um, I looked back at Dean Coleman and she gave me a real genuine smile. And I think, and I, I gave her one too, because I really truly thank her for being there for us this semester. And she is committed to having monthly meetings with Tessa for years to come and to, to really see has said be what it should be. So this, the president's award, my name on it too, President Cody Christensen. <laughs> so whenever she looks at it on her wall, she'll never forget her favorite statement. <laughs> the has the president's award to Dean Nancy Cohen. Let's give it up for Dean Cohen. Yeah. All right, that's it. I want to say thank you so much to our clubs. Mark is here. Amazing job with your club, the, uh, the Environmental Student Society Club. Environmental Student Club. Listen, they made us change all the names this year. Now I'm all for my Great. The Environmental Beverly. Um, and the society leaders and, and Kat and Natalie, we just did an amazing uh, author spotlight with me last week. You got to watch it. We talk about dirty things, clean things. Yeah, on YouTube. Um, I'm just really, really proud to have been the president uh, of the student body. It meant the world to me. Um, and so many students came up to me this week and thanked me for just doing what I do naturally, which is support support my fellow um, students. And I am so proud to have been able to do the things that we've done this year and to touch people's lives and, and have lifelong friends. And I cannot wait to see the Hustle Awards next year. I can't wait to be on that Zoom when you announce that we are the student government of the Harvard Extension School. Dean Coleman knows I'm gonna be at that. <laughs> um, and just, 
Thank you for an amazing three years. And I cannot wait to see what you all do.